Awesome. Let's let's accent the the numbers, the downbeats, and try to keep the triplets in between nice and soft. Last tempo. So this is not quite a warm-up. There was more like, let's just think in triplets. Uh, but yeah, we do have a lot of stuff to do. So, last week, we uh, started to address the, the idea of moving the snare drums across the beat whilst maintaining that swing pattern, right? We, we did that with the snare drum and the bass drum as well. No? Just snare drum. And did we, do, we did the first three... Oh, no. Hang on. What did we do last week? <laughs> the whole thing? Yeah, we did Benigram, and we moved on to the next version. We started the snare. We haven't done the bass, okay. And this? Yeah, we passed it this way. It emerged. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play. I'll play. Everyone's gonna play. <laughs> Did you see the young musician of the year? On Friday night. Where? It was percussion section. Oh. Um, I, yeah. I don't even know what that is. What's that? It's a competition. With musician, young musician of the year. It was percussion. It was percussion section. Yeah. You can still get it right on the iPlayer. Oh. I'm not, I'm not biased. They only give me sticks for free. 
So let's see. Um, yeah, so that idea uh, that we we started kind of um, exploring last week, fundamentally it's the idea of the grid, right? Where we have, in this case, this as the ostinato, whilst the left hand and the bass drums move across the beats, right? Uh, following that, uh, the, the idea that Benny Grab uses in, in, in his book, right? But again, the grid is a concept that's been around since the beginning of rhythm, right? You can play it here and there. It's just, the, the, it's a mathematical notion of permutation, right? You can have an event happening on every single partial of a an idea of subdivision, right? Every single one of those slots become available to place an event. That can be the snare drum, that can be the bass drum, that can be, and today we're gonna explore then how to well, I guess, musically explore that idea of gridding, but using embellishments such as accents, uh, flams, diddles, orchestration ideas, um, what else? Um, alternating snare drums and bass drums. Yeah, I think there's two more, but now I can't remember, but it's fine, because I got them written down. Uh, okay, so let's uh, address, let's do the snare drums again. Maybe perhaps just the first three combinations, which would be, I'll show you. All right, so you've got the swing pattern on the right symbol. Ding, 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 ding. First one, the snare plays on the numbers. Second permutation, the snare moves to the middle triplet. Third permutation, the snare is now on the third triplet. And that's the exercise, right? And then, of course, you can do the first two triplets, then the second and the third. So those aren't there, but it's just following that logic of displacement, 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 right? Until you exhaust all the options when it comes to where to place notes on the grid. Okay, so the first one, snare drum on the numbers, okay? The first triplet of each beat. All right, so let's get the, the swing going first. On to the uh, go. All right, one, two, three, and snare. Two, three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so let's do that now with the bass room instead. Very nice. Next movement, let's go back to the snare drum. The snare drum will be, will be placed in the middle triplet. The and, okay, one and a. Uh, or if you guys count one triplet, it's on the trip. Okay, 
Tin ta, 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 tin ta. Okay, so snare drum in the middle triple. Again, let's get the swing going first. One, two, three, and the four, and the one, and the two, and the four, and the one, and the Tap. Tap, 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 tap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three four and a one, two, three, four. Ah, 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 ah. Cool. So uh, clearly, the middle triple is the most difficult one of all. Mainly because the swing pattern implies a one and three. Right? And the two being omitted kind of becomes a sort of a no play zone. When you have to, when you have to add that snare into the, you know, the middle triple, the second triple of the beat, it sort of reveals that you, we weren't really aware of that gap. Or it was just a, va a gap, and that's the thing about rests, right? And we all know that, and it's fine, I get it. Rests are often just kind of, whatever, that I don't play that. But we also stop counting in a way. We don't really account for them, and it becomes about the notes that you do play. These exercises, like the grid, really expose that, you know, the lack of awareness for the, the gaps. What you don't play, yeah, yeah. And it is about what you don't play, always. Even if you're not aware, it's like the, 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 the old idea of there's only two kinds of drummers, right? When it comes to, for example, rudiments, let's say. It's, a, it's, a, it's just an example of that kind of mindset. There's only two kinds of drummers when it comes to rudiments, right? The ones who know rudiments and use them, and the ones who don't know rudiments and use them. Same thing with rests. You're going to use them, regardless. So you might as well be aware of that, right? They are there. You, you do, like, I mean, as far as we, am I, I'm aware, music is not like for five minutes. There's gaps. <laughs> That's where rhythm comes from, right? Um, so let's try that with the bass drum. Right. So the middle triplet with the bass. Okay. That's just what it looks, sounds like. Right. One and a two and a three and You know what we can do? Let's do a little prepping exercise. Let's set it up. Let's just play quarter notes on the right cymbal. Okay? We're going to count triplets. We'll play quarter notes over there. And we'll play that bass drum on the ands. So, one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Four and a one and a two and a and a four and a one and a two and a and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a and a four and a and two and three and four and one and two and As you feel comfortable, add the hi hat on two and four. Four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a 
two, four, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and two, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and ding, 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 ding. Right, and we bring back the swing. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. All right. It's just for us to scratch the surface kind of feel. A lot of these exercises today will feel awkward. That's okay. Consider these, these sessions as a kind of a sort of, I'm gonna be challenged, I'm gonna self-diagnose where my, you know, potholes are, where do I go like, nope, nope, it's not going in. All right, take a note of that, because then you, can, you get to go home, slow it down, be like, all right, I couldn't do that there, let me practice this now, right? Because it's not supposed to be, done today, this is just, you know. It's a 60 minute session where I have to demonstrate like things that take five years to learn. So, moving on, speaking of which, uh, third triplet. Now we've got, it's the, the one at the bottom. Let's start with the snare, okay? Actually, we'll start with, by playing just the swing pattern again, hi-hat on two and four, and then we'll add the snare onto the us. One, two, three, and add. one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and snare. Here we go. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a up, 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 a one, a two, a three, a four, 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 a one. A three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Ding ding, ding ding, da ding, ding ding. Bass drum. One, a two, a three, a four, a 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 one, a two, a three, a four. A one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. All right. Noise. Okay. Cool. Then what I would do. Once mechanically those things make sense, I will start to 
sort of come, I would come up with little routines, for example. Let's say you focus on, you want to really focus on the first three permutations. Number, ands, and does. Sweet. Then you do four bars of, let's say you focus on the snare drum first. Four bars of numbers, four bars of ands, four bars of us. Non-stop. Da, da, di, 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 da, da da di da di da di di da di da di di da di ka di di ka di ka kung kung ka di ka di di 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 ka di da 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 da di da da and you keep on looping that. It's more difficult than what it sounds like, especially when I sing it with that silly voice. It makes sound like a game, but it's not. It's, it's a hell of an exercise. You turn on the click, and you do that for five minutes. It doesn't need to be, you know, eight hours of that. Five minutes. If that feels comfortable, even physically, not just to the ear, but like, do you feel relaxed or are you like on the edge of, of collapse, right? If it feels comfortable, right on. You have two options now. You can speed it up. Try that a little bit faster. Right? It's going to feel different. Or, slash and, go find some music, you know, especially if it's within the jazz kind of idiom, and do the, the same routine along to, to a track. Before you know it, you're going to feel like, oh, actually... I can actually use these ideas with music. They are not that weird, right? And you'll kind of start to connect the dots for us, like between the exercise and the application. Exercises are not necessarily, sometimes, sometimes, not always, but sometimes exercises are not very applicable. They're kind of mechanical, they don't sound great anyway, they're very repetitive. But to then sort of like the, the step in the, in the middle, would be to use an exercise with music, right? Meaning that you're sort of trying to merge that idea of actually playing and practice. Right? And eventually they just, the, the lines go blurry and you find your voice within that style. Okay? So, um, let's try. Let's try four bars of each. We'll do it nice and slow. We'll do this with a metronome. Though. Four bars of each. Um, and let's see. Let's, you know what? Let's do quarter notes on the right symbol first. Just so we get used to moving that left hand across the beat. All right. So quarters on the right symbol, left hand will be playing four bars of each one of those permutations. All right, so one, two, three, here we go. First one. Two. Three. Four. Shift. Two, three, four, shift, two, three, four, back to the first one, two, Three, four, two, three, and the four shift. One and and three and four and one and two and three and four. Three, two and three and four and four. Shift. Three. Bass drum. 
two, three, four, two, three, shift. Three, four, Okay, etc. etc. It's not easy. It's not easy. Then we try to play the swing pattern. By the way, also cool to practice along to a shuffle. If you guys want to practice like the bluesy, rocky version of this, same thing. Same stuff. All right, so now with the swing pattern. Uh, one, two, three, snare drum first. One, two, here we go. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, and shift. Three, four, three. Two, three, four. Bass room. Two. Three, four, two, three, four. Three, four. And that's just those three. And then you can do two bars of each, one bar of each. Right? You don't need to immediately go for speed. Just to shrink the amount of time that you spend on each one of them will challenge you differently because it will force you to think quicker, right? All right, moving on. The idea of comping, though, is not just based on ideas like this. Okay, these are the mechanical elements of playing independently from the swing pattern there, fair enough. But that's not necessarily what comping is all about. Comping is about, well, as the word implies, the company. Right? Okay, got an explanation there, blah, blah, blah. And then I wrote that the quickest and most efficient way to develop comping is to first develop the necessary independence that will allow you to locate and then place notes wherever you want, making your rhythm fluent. That's the, that's the, the grid. Okay? You want to make sure that you can place the notes wherever you want on the grid. So the grid is a great way to achieve that. But then, the... All right, the syncopation book, it's a really good book to extract melodies. Because once you, you got the mechanical skill to place the notes wherever you want, all right, so challenge yourself to play specific melodies. And that's exactly what we will do today. Now, when you look at the syncopation book, Right. And let's just focus on 
the first bar, just the first bar of page 38. Today we'll only work on one bar, right? Last week I told these guys that if you have 10 different ways, we won't do 10 today, I think it's eight different ways to play the one bar. Well, effectively, let's say 10, because one of the exercises that I do with my private students is I have this system which is one rhythm, 10 ways, I called it. And it's basically the idea of extracting 10 different ways out of the one rhythmic idea. That can be a drum fill, flam exercises, doubles, uh, drum beats, swing. It doesn't really matter, right? Um, the irony of that is that that system that I, I give you guys it says one rhythm, ten ways. Today, I'm adding eight. So we already have ten rhythm, or one rhythm, 18 ways. Because um, these eight are not part of the other system. Have I given you that sheet before? Yeah. Um, so, we've got that very simple rhythm there, right? It's one and, and then and of two, and three, and then four. Right, it a five year old can read that. I know that because I could when I was five, so <laughs> there you go. That's it. One and two and three and four and one. And right, we don't need to practice that, that's the easy bit. Um, now the interesting thing is that, of course, the first, um, I, I guess I would notice that, but it would be important to notice that that rhythm doesn't necessarily fit the jazz feel because of one very uh, major detail, which is the fact that it's in eighth notes, right? It's a binary subdivision, right? And, of course, when we play jazz, the majority of the time we are thinking in triplets. So what is the way to turn that, that first bar, into something that is applicable to jazz? Does anyone know the answer? Some people should know the answer. <laughs> okay, how do we do that? How does one look at that, right, and turn that into a one and two and three, one and two and three. The counting would be in triplets, but how do we convert that rhythm into triplets, right? There is a way. There is a way. Check that out. That's the key, that's the conversion key. Okay, so here's what's going on. The eighth note, the eighth notes, right, the straight eighth notes, binary, become shuffled eighth note triplets. So that means that the ands will become the uhs. Right? It's a bit blurry here, but those are eighth note triplet rests. So we still have the same number of notes per, per bar. Eight of them, we just alter the distances. And that's the secret between playing straight and swung. That really is the only difference, right? You assume this to be this. That's the same thing. Straight, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Right? Leaving jazz for a little bit now, you can do the same thing to a drum beat. Let's say you play, and you can use different conversion keys or tools to, to kind of assume, uh, let's say, a 16th note based drum beat and turn that into a 16th note swung drum beat. The, the conversion key would be the same. Let's say four 16th notes, straight 16th notes, would become four shuffled 16th note triplets. Shuffled. So one e and a two e and a three e and a becomes one and a three e and a three e and a one e and a two e and a three e and rise up. It's 
the same groove, two different feels. And that's, that's a, a very important skill to hone because you know, sometimes you want to swing them a little bit, but it's not necessarily swing, it's swung, right? It's still rock or it's still funk, but we give that extra, you know, think John Bonham. The guy didn't play anything straight. Everything was swung. Everything had that behind it, right? Even if he wasn't playing it. That's the, that's the other thing. A lot of this is implied. Okay, it's the way the inner clock is working. Is it or is it right? That's the difference. Okay, going back to this. If that is the key, right, to convert this into something that can be played in the context of triplets, if we were to notate that bar again and using like the triplet subdivision, we would have something. Actually, I didn't write it down. I should have, could have. But maybe, here's what we can do. You've got a fork. I'll give you a pen. Uh, do you have paper? You do? Oh, you have your, your notebook and stuff. So do, do you need paper, Derek? You got it? So just a little five-minute exercise. Let's notate this, still just on the snare drum, but using that formula to convert this into triplets. So remember, anything that falls on the and in the straight for form becomes the uh. That's it. Things that fall on numbers stay on numbers, ands become us. Yeah? There you have it. That's the solution. Okay? And that's how you turn a straight eighth note pattern into an eighth note triplet pattern. Okay? With a string fiddle. So, this becomes. A two, a three, four, one, and two, and three, four, three, da, 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 da. That's it. That's the same rhythm. Straight. Swung. All right. All right. Now, that's just half of the fun, right? Because that's just the beginning. So there you have it. One rhythm, eight ways. The first way, we've, we've done it. As it is. Just play the pattern as, as you see written. In this kind of swing feel. Okay, that's the first way. We'll, we'll play that together, but that, anyway, that's the first way. Then the second way is a very fun one to explore the melody becomes the accents in a single stroke roll. So let's say you're playing eighth note triplets, all the triplets of the bar, no accents, and then those notes become the accents that you then place on top of the singles. Now you've got a little bit more notes but you still keep that motif alive. Okay? The third way, the accents can be orchestrated. All right. Bring some color into your playing, add some toms, All right? but you follow the same rules. Okay? The fourth way, you can then diddle the non-accented notes. So the notes that you keep as ghost notes, they can, they can then become double, so you can create what I call accented rolls. Okay, so then you have okay, I can't say all that, but you get the point. Okay. Um, of the with the doubles. No, no, no. 
Yes. yes. Well, the non-accented notes will become doubles. So, for example, going from uh, the second one where we have singles, so, and then we accent the notes of the melody, which would be okay. Then there's all those notes in between that are ghost notes. Those we can then diddle them. They become, in this case, 16th note triplets. Right? I can't sing that. But yeah. Right? That's it. You can flam the accents. So instead of accents, Okay, if you want a little, bit, a little bit more beef, you can flam them. You can play the melody on the snare drum whilst you play the jazz right pattern. Same thing with the bass drum. Okay, then you can alternate between the snare, snare drum and the bass drum. Ba boom, ba boom, ka, ba boom, ba boom, ka. Same pattern, right? But you assign different sounds to each note. Okay, and then you can, you know, turn that around. You do boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba. That's it. Simple ideas. They're, they're not easy, but they're simple ideas. So let's let's do first the first one. Just play that pattern, bar number one, as we see it, but in the swing form. Okay. Now swinging. We'll play that just as you know. I don't even need to assign a sticking. Really, I was going to say a single, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, that's it. Chat, chat. So let's see. One, two, three, four. One. All right. Let's try to play uh, the hi hat on two and four. I know, just for the sake of it. Just because we can. Right, so one, two, three, four. Okay, now those notes that we just played will become the accents in a single stroke roll kind of form. Okay, so now we have this at the foundation. And we'll accent. Okay. Now we need to think a little bit more in terms of sticking, which hand plays each accent, so we don't feel ourselves getting, you know, getting confused because of that. So we need to think about, you know, yeah, the sticking and the accents and how they relate. Alright, let's 
Kiedersky, there you go. So let's start by just playing the singles, no accents. One, two, three, four. One and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four. One, two, all right, so. One, two, let's play the accents. one the next pattern could be number three would be yeah uh, uh, yes the accents orchestrated so right hand accents whenever you have a right hand accent you play it on the floor tom left hand accents on the high tom Simple little fill. And if that's always bear this in mind. You're practice, practicing ideas based on melodies. So if that's the melody of the tune, that fill, as simple as it sounds, will fit like a glove. Because that's the, the same, it's gonna share the same rhythmic skeleton with the rest of the tune. It's not just a fill, it's the fill. That's always a difference. Right? There are fills that fit and fills that belong. Always go for the latter, right? Okay, let's try that. I mean, let's try that. Let me think about it. <laughs> you guys only have one path. Uh, exactly. Uh, hmm. Okay, okay. Problem solved. Right hand accents go on the right symbol. Left hand accents go on the hi hat. Ghost notes stay on the snare, right? Problem solved. One, two, three, four, three. Pop, 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 pop. Pop 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 Ah sorry That's the idea. With the toms, of course, sounds a little bit more colorful. And then you know what? Once you get comfortable with these ideas, once again, do explore the, the idea of applying them. For instance, you know, play one bar of swing, one bar of the fill. And you can then try to play along to a tune and see how that fits. Right, the fill. Okay, next one. The idea of dealing the non accent notes. So it's a, technically a bit more challenging, but it's a great little exercise to practice. By all means, practice that idea as well using normal 
Why, I don't know why I said normal. 16th note patterns, right? So straight uh, 16th note ideas. So for, let's say, for example, you've got the... Right? That's your accent pattern. You can then diddle the, mid the notes in the middle, the ghost notes. same kind of concept can be applied to straight field swung field doesn't matter and flaming the accents pretty straightforward that one again in terms of concept simple in terms of execution not so simple but it's a valid exercise to practice regardless if you want to really give your flames a workout to use them in context of a, of a melody is always the best way to go about it. Once, of course, once you understand the mechanics of a flam and you want to go past being able to do this, that's cool, but that's not music. Okay, do this kind of stuff, right? Moving on, because we only have <laughs> two minutes. Uh, play the melody on the snare drum whilst playing the swing pad. Now this one is something that is very applicable and interests me because of the, the concept of comping, period. A lot of jazz drumming comping is all about keeping the swing over here whilst the left hand and the bass drum accompany the, the other musicians. So to have that skill to tell the hand, you know, give your hand very specific information that it's not necessarily a one bar loop as you would probably play if you're playing rock music or drum or, or blues or whatever, like more, less improvised music. What did I say? Improvised, right? Improvised music. Sorry, I'm getting tired now. Um, if it's a little bit more on the basis of, you know, verse, verse, chorus, bridge, river most likely your left hand won't be just improvising all over the place. Most likely. In jazz drumming, that's fairly normal, right? It's, it's unusual to play a, a jazz groove that kind of just, just... That just goes on like that for five minutes. That, that's unusual. I mean, you can do that for a little while, but then eventually that left hand will kick in and start doing the, you know, the improv stuff. Well, then again, that comes from that idea of being able to execute melodic ideas against the jazz right pattern, right? So, bring that back. We're doing the, the one at the bottom. The left hand will play that pattern whilst we play this, right? So, Okay. Does that make sense though? And then the same thing with your bass drum, right? You practice the same ideas. cool one that actually I didn't it's not on that list it's it's difficult it's a difficult one but it's 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 still fun it's it's challenging but fun so think of this let's see let's say you're playing the melody with the bass drum against the the, the swing pattern over there yeah but then because you end up having all those gaps right knows that you don't play why not fill in those gaps with the left hand 
So you've got the bass drum playing the melody, the left hand filling in the gaps, the right hand playing the jazz right pattern, and the left foot playing the two and four. Why not? Right? <laughs> right? What? But does that make sense? Conceptually speaking? If I, if I can do my own, if, if I can walk the walk, or if it's just... Right, so, the bass drum is doing... Right? Then the left hand, if it's filling in the gaps, will be... Uh, okay. <laughs> right hand. I'll add the left foot as well. Tricky. Let's stop there. But th I just to show, right, the possibilities are virtually endless. And then, let's not forget. Huh? Yeah, as promised. As promised, that was just one bar. You, you, then, then you move on to the next one, you'll be like, all right, I'm still dumb. <laughs> and it starts all over again. Right, and then you move on to the third one. By the way, once you got four bars down, cool. Try a little four bar pattern then, right? Apply the same ideas but to a longer phrase, which will challenge your mind differently, right? Sometimes, again, as drummers, we focus too much on one bar patterns. Blub, 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 blub. We, we can't really get out of that eventually. And anything that kind of gets out of that rule, we call it a drum fill, <laughs> right? As a fill. And then back to the one bar loop. Loop, 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 loop. If you start thinking in two bar phrases, four bar phrases, eight bar phrases, and that's your loop, yeah, you, your mind will work at a different, you know, RPM, that's for sure. Boom, that's an hour. <laughs>